Welcome Guild Wars 2 fans. Today we're going to take a look at the Dragonfall Meta Farm. We're going to break this video down into four main segments. The accessibility of this farm and what mounts and masteries are required. Break down the Meta Farm and take a look at how you can get the most out of your time on this map. Tips and tricks to maximize your gold per hour. Finally, we'll take a look at the gold per hour and break down the loot. As always, if you find this guide helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Now let's take a look at what masteries and mounts are required to keep up with the meta farm. The gliding mastery, the jackal mount, a flying mount, either the sky scale or the griffin. If you don't have the sky scale, you will also need the springer. Now let's take a look at each phase of the meta farm and how to maximize your profit during each phase. It is important to note that the keys can only be acquired on this map through participating in events. To have enough keys to open all of the coffers at the end of the final meta, you're going to need to participate in as many events as possible. Bridges will be the first available event to complete on a fresh map. Once the map resets, immediately start moving south, complete this bridge as fast as possible, and then waypoint back to Pack Command and go to the West Bridge. After completing two of the bridges, the next events that will be available are Escorts. These are generally available two to three minutes after the map resets. It's important to stagger these events so that all of the players on the map are able to participate in all three Escort events. Each Escort event will reward three keys and three coffers after the bosses have been defeated. To be able to make all three events, it is also recommended that you have a roller beetle, the recommended order to complete the events in, southeast, then northwest, and finally southwest, shortest to longest durations to complete. As you progress down each path, make sure to keep the NPC's paths clear. Keep them moving as quickly as possible. When you reach the end of the path, burn the champion down as quickly as possible and move on to the next event. After completing the Southwest Escort, the next part of the meta will include upgrading camps. During this time, the events in each camp must be completed to progress the camp to the next level. Important to note that if the events are not completed, the camp will not progress to the next level. The events that carry the most importance and are the most rewarding are the Mender, Color, and Champion Brandstorm events. Note, for the Mender event, after escorting the NPC to the final champion, that champion will be invulnerable until the crystals have been destroyed. Once the crystals have been destroyed, DPS the champion down, collect your coffers, and move on to the next event. Southwest camp events are pretty straightforward, so let's go ahead and take a look at the key, which will be the same for all three maps. All events in red, bridge events in yellow, brainstorm, blue, champ in green, and mender in orange. For Southeast Camp, it's also worth noting that there are two more events that are for this camp which are closer to the starting waypoint north of Crystal Wing. However, I find these events are generally completed by pugs on the map, and it is also easier to access them from the starting waypoint. Finally, for Northwest Camp, do note that the fastest way to the furthest Northeast Call event is through using the Thermal Propulsion Mastery, which is just northwest of the waypoint. As you're progressing the camps, it is important to check the camps at level 2 and level 3 for the Mender events, since these are the most profitable events during this portion of the meta. Because these events will give 3 keys and 3 coffers each, it is generally possible to get 3 to 4 Mender events per meta. General rule of thumb is down patrol helicopters, FEGs, abomination escorts are too lengthy of events to be time efficient. However, if there are pugs in the area on the map that are working these events, it is worth your time to go by, tag the events, and move on. Scaling the event does not add any additional value because champions on this map do not drop champion bags. Finally, once each camp has reached level 4, Krauk's pre-event will begin. Each camp will have two escort events and two disruptor events. At this point, it is best for a large squad to break into three smaller groups. One for each camp. This would be about 16 players per group, if it is a full squad. Each group will do their respective events and then move to help any lanes that are still in progress. Once the pre-event has been completed, it's recommended that you stay in the three separate subgroups you created to complete the three camp events. One for northwest of Dragon Snare, one for southwest of Dragon Snare, and finally southeast of Dragon Snare. During this part of the event, groups will need to destroy four weak points and face a champion. It is important that these champions are all killed at the same time. Similar to how the mechanics for the Octavine work, it is common practice for each group to hold their champion at 20% health until the final burn phase is called. 
If you fail to kill all of the champions within the 30 second window of the first champion dying, the champions will respawn at 50% health. Once all of the champions have been defeated and all of the weak spots have been destroyed, all of the players will be transported to a cliffside where the coffers can be looted. However, this is not the end of the meta event. The bonus bosses. Following the Krakatoric event and looting the coffers on the cliffside, an 18 minute timer will start. Here's a map of the 9 champion locations and the paths used to get to them. I will quickly review what mounts you want to use while traveling between each of the champions. The first champion is relatively easy to get to since it's just northwest of the cliffside you were teleported to after completing the Krakatoric event. Next, waypoint to northwest camp and use your springer to scale the cliffside just southwest of the waypoint. Next, you will use your griffin or your sky scale to get to the third champion. For the fourth champion, you will continue to travel south using your griffin. For the fifth champion, you will continue by traveling east on your griffin. For the sixth champion, you will use the southeast shrine and travel north using your griffin. For the seventh champion, you will continue traveling northeast on your griffin. For the eighth champion, you will travel northwest on your griffin and also need to use your springer. For the final champion, use the waypoint at northwest camp and then travel using the thermal tube just northwest of the waypoint. Now that you've completed your champion farm, let's go ahead and talk about ways to maximize profit. For Dragonfall and other Living Season 4 maps, Volatile Magic is a great source of income. Make sure you consume your misbound motes for Volatile Magic. I recommend you accumulate tens of thousands of Volatile Magic before purchasing any shipments. Next, you will want to select the type of shipments that are the most profitable if you're planning on selling only the raw materials. However, it is more beneficial to purchase trophy shipments and use them in the crafting of legendary weapons. Next, what you will do is transfer your champion bags to a bag opening character, which is a character that is between level 49 and 53. The reason we are transferring them to a bag opening character is because gear that is from that level range will give us more expensive materials when it is salvaged. Once we have opened all of the bags and salvaged all of the gear, we will want to take and refine those materials before selling them on the trading post. It is important that you refine these materials first, otherwise you are losing about a 1-2 to two gold average per hour. Also remember never to instantly sell any materials on the trading post. If it is possible, however, hold on to the items and craft them into more expensive items which will increase your profit. Finally, let's go ahead and take a look at the gold per hour, as well as the type of loot you can be expecting. After collecting data from a bunch of Dragonfall meta farms, I found the average gold per hour is between 25 and 30 gold per hour. So let's go ahead and take a look at where that gold is going to come from. Here you can see the top 15 items in the gold per hour category. I will note this graph does not include any items acquired through Volatile Magic, as we will be discussing those later separately. I will note that I am salvaging any blue and green unidentified gear or materials for Generation 2 Legendary Crafting. With all of that in mind, the leading item in gold per hour category is the rare unidentified gear, followed by Elderwood Logs, Ectoplasm, and an array of Tier 6 orbs. Now let's take a quick look at the currencies. Having Karmic Retribution for this map helps out a lot. Between the consumables from killing mobs and the karma from events, I am getting about 50,000 karma per hour. If you are in need of additional trophies and are able to pair it with about 3,900 trade contracts, this will give you an additional 7 gold per hour. However, it is worth noting that those trade contracts will need to come from some other source, since you will not be gaining that many trade contracts from Dragonfall. An alternate use for karma that is more involved would be making beaded weapons. This option will give you slightly more profit per thousand karma. However, there is additional time and resources required to craft these materials. This option would give you an additional eight gold per hour instead of seven. Volatile magic is the other important currency from this map. I am averaging about 2,400 volatile magic per hour. Since I am generally crafting legendaries, I am using these to purchase trophy shipments, which cost one gold and 250 volatile magic each which means I'm able to purchase nine trophy shipments per hour. When I'm opening these trophy shipments, I'm generally gaining about one additional gold of trophies per shipment that I purchase. For this example, I would be gaining nine gold in materials per hour. This means between both currencies, I'm gaining about 16 gold per hour. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the items that are best units per hour on the map 
Not all of them are necessarily the most expensive, but they definitely come in handy when you're doing your crafting. Dragonfall is a good source for tier 5 crafting materials, tier 5 and tier 6 dust, as well as tier 6 orbs, and volatile magic, which then you have the flexibility to target the materials that you need for crafting. Also, the tier 6 orbs come in handy for doing conversions into amalgamated gemstones, especially if you are crafting generation 2 legendary weapons. As we wrap up this video, I wanted to leave you with some final thoughts on the Dragonfall meta farm. While the gold per hour is slightly lower than Drizzlewood Coast and requires a wider range of masteries to farm this map effectively, it still has some strengths which include a strong gold per hour, flexible loot options with volatile magic, and a wide range of events to be completed on a beautiful and fun environment. Hopefully everyone's found this guide helpful and if you do, please remember to hit that like button to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Hope everyone's having a great one, and we'll catch you next time.